Welcome to our online information session for the Francis Payne Bolton School of Nursing, hosted by Kim Edwards, Gail Petty, and Carla Myers. My name is Michael Mason, and I will be taking your questions via email to be answered live on air. If you have a question, please send it to summeredgehelp at case.edu with the subject line info session. If we do not answer your question live, we will follow up with you via email shortly. Now to your hosts, Kim Edwards, Gail Petty, and Carla Myers. Good evening. On behalf of my colleagues, Gail Petty, Carly R. Myers, and myself, Kimberly Edwards, we would like to welcome you to the Francis Payne Bolton School of Nursing webinar. The webinar this evening is titled, Nursing at FPB, Preparing for Orientation and Beyond. This informative webinar is intended to prepare students for orientation, classes, and clinicals. During this webinar, we will focus on reviewing three items on the new student checklist that you need to complete prior to orientation. We will explore your schedule of classes and talk about what you will need to do for registration. We will discuss what will happen at our Prepare to Care orientation on August 21st, 22nd, and 23rd. And we will give you an overview of our Student Services Department. Finally, you will be able to participate in a question and answer session by going to summerregehelp at case.edu. We will begin this session by reviewing three items that need to be completed prior to orientation. The first item that I'd like to talk about this evening is uh, the submission of immunization documentation. All students have to show that they have been immunized and they have to submit their uh, immunization documentation. All students have to have two doses of measles, mumps, and rubella, or they have to show that they have a positive titer. They have to have one booster of tetanus, diphtheria, and pertussis. They also have to have two doses of varicella or the chickenpox vaccine and a positive titer. Students will also have to show that they've had two doses of polio or the positive titer for polio. And then also, um, students will have to show that they've been immunized from hepatitis B. They have to have three doses or a positive titer. Now, um, many of you probably have the hepatitis B already. It is a series of three shots. If you don't, you'll want to contact your health provider and start those immunizations right away. Those three doses are given within six months of time, so it does take a little bit of time to get those immunizations in. You'll also have to have a two-step PPD testing. This is for TB screening. Just this one time when you enter nursing school, we ask that you have this test done twice and you will have to submit documentation. If by chance you do not have um, this testing done, we're gonna try to set this testing up during the first two weeks of school at FPB. Um, you may also submit the interferon gamma release assay uh, lab value. The hospital also is requiring that all students have the flu vaccine. So in mid-October, we're also gonna set up the, that vaccine and we will make sure that you are immunized immunized against the flu. Now the deadline to submit your immunization documentation is July 1st, so you wanna start working on this right away to meet this deadline. <clears throat> if you do have any other <clears throat> questions about your immunization requirements, you can contact Tim Epic at University Health Services, and their number is 216-368-2700. Four, five. And again, all of this documentation has to be submitted because you will not be able to go into the clinical setting. Um, the hospital has requirements and they do not allow us to take students if these requirements are not met. So please try to get this documentation in. The next thing you're gonna have to do is order your nursing uniforms. 
Um, you're going to need to order two white nursing uniforms. You'll need to order two tops and two bottoms. Um, this year, the school has permitted two different styles, so you will have your choice of two different styles of uniforms. The patches will come sewn on from the scrub company. The white uniforms are the uniforms that you will be wearing in the hospital setting. You will have to purchase a, a Francis Payne Bolton blue polo shirt. Um, this also um, will have the emblem provided. Um, it will be sewn on, and that is the shirt that you will wear when you are in the community clinicals. You'll want to purchase white shoes. They need to be professional, all leather, no extra colors, no striping, no open toes, and no clogs are permitted but please make sure that you do find a pair that is comfortable. Lastly, you want to make sure that you do have or purchase a watch with a second hand. It's very imperative that you do have a watch with a second hand because early in the semester, um, we're in the clinical setting, we're going to learn to take vitals, so you will need that. There's one optional item, a lab coat. There is a couple styles. There's a short version or the longer version, and if you wish, you can also purchase that. The order for the uniforms is on the new student checklist. We'd like to see you order those uniforms also by July 1st um, so that you do have your uniforms ready to go at the start of the school year. Um, if you have any questions, you can contact Aaron Lay at Robert Scrubs and his contact number is 1-877-512-9000. Because we get a lot of questions about our uniforms, we thought we would um, show you some examples. Um, the blue polo shirt there to the left, um, that's the um, shirt that you will order from um, the uniform company. That's the shirt that you will wear into the community setting for clinicals. In addition to the blue polo shirt, um, in the community setting, you'll wear a dark pair of slacks or khaki slacks. Um, there's the picture there for the professional shoes, professional right shoes, and again, make sure that they are comfortable. The lab coat is optional, um, that is totally up to you, and that long version, that picture is permitted as well. And then don't forget, you'll need that watch with the second hand. We also need to have um, the fingerprint waiver form completed. If you are under the age of 18, your parents are gonna have to uh, see this form and then complete it and send it back to the school. Uh, the form is on the new student checklist and it should be completed by July 1st as well. And again, that's only if you're under the age of 18. Okay, so now let's take a look at your schedule, what your classes are gonna look like, and then we'll talk about what you're gonna need to do for registration. So the first class that you're gonna have on your schedule is Nursing 110. That is Foundations of the Discipline. In that class, you're going to learn about nursing, what is nursing as a discipline, what's the role of the nurse. That class meets every Wednesday from 3 to 3.50 in the afternoon. It's a one credit hour class, and I'm going to register you for that class. Nursing 111 is your next nursing class. That's Foundations of the Practice 1. Um, in that class, you're going to learn things such as communication, maybe how to bathe a patient, vital signs. You're going to learn all about pain and comfort measures. Um, other things may be how to care for a patient who has a Foley catheter and INO. Um, this class is um, on Mondays from 3 to 4.15 p.m., or we have a second session that runs from 4.30 to 5.45 p.m. on Monday, Mondays. In addition to the class, you will also have one hour of lab each week, and then you will have four hours of clinical. 
the class is three credits, I will pre-register you for all three parts of that class. So the class, the lab, and the clinical. Um, one comment here is if you do play a sport, please send me an email and let me know um, because um, you will need to go into the 3 to 4.15 p.m. class. I pre-register you in that class so that you can attend the practices. And the practices usually start around 4.30, so you'd be ready to start your um, sport um, practices. The next class is Biology 114. It's Principles of Biology. The class is uh, um, every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday from 11.30 to 12.20, and it's a three credit hour class. I will also pre-register you for this class. Um, one important thing that you need to know, though, is if you have AP credit for biology and you score a four or greater, um, you do not have to take this class in the fall. That may be important to know because if you're planning to take a minor in another area, because you don't have to take that uh, biology class, you can add a class in um, maybe to start a minor. Biology 116 is anatomy and physiology. That class runs on Monday and Wednesday also. It runs from 9 to 10.15 in the morning and it's three credit hours. I will pre-register you for this class also. Nursing 277 is your CPR and first aid class. We're going to complete this class during our prepare to care orientation. So on August 21st and 22nd, you will meet with us and we will complete the CPR portion. On August 23rd, we will complete the first aid portion of the class. By doing that, you will receive a half credit of physical education, and I will pre-register you for that class as well. The next class on our list is the SAGES class. Now you're gonna have a first seminar class this semester. You're gonna have a little bit of choice about that, um, but you're gonna be working with the SAGES department. Sometime in August, they will be contacting you and they will help pre-register you for a class of your choice that falls under the SAGES category. The last two classes is where you're gonna have to do the work. So you're gonna need to add a GER, a general education requirement, and that class has to fall under the arts and humanities area or the social sciences. It will be your choice. They usually run about three or four credits, and then you're gonna have to register for this class in SIS. So what you're gonna to wanna to do is get on the SIS system, do a search, look for any of the classes that fall under the arts and humanities that may be of interest to you, and you'll want to choose one and add it to your shopping cart. Then in July, the week of July 11th through 16, you'll be able to add that class. You'll be able to register for that class through SIS. The last class on my list is your choice. If you would like to take a physical education, you can um, also get on SIS, look to see if there's one that interests you. I know some students like to take a the gym their first semester here. They uh, get to meet a lot of other students throughout the campus. But again, that's your choice. You don't have to take that, only if you choose. Okay, so now we talked about all of the classes that is on your schedule. It's 17 credits. Now let's take a look at this template that I made for you so that you can see where these classes will actually appear during the week. So if we look under the Monday um, column there, you'll see that Biology 116, you will be taking that class from 9 to 10.15, and it's plotted there on Mondays and Wednesdays. Biology 114, we said, runs Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays from 11.30 to 12.20. Um, if we continue down the Monday column, that's where the 111 nursing course is. And you can see there are two sessions. You will only be registered for one of those. 
If we look on the Tuesday and Thursday columns, that says clinical. You will be registered for four hours of clinical. So you see four gray boxes there, but you will not be in all four of those gray boxes. You will only be registered for one of those. And then our last class on our template is Nursing 110. And you'll have that class every Wednesday from 3 to 3.50. Okay, so we now know where our classes are during the week. What I'm going to do also is add and uh, register you for a one hour lab and the four hour clinical. So for instance, say on Tuesday, you will have the clinical from seven to 11. You may have um, the lab um, in early morning on Thursday. So that would then free you up for the afternoon of Tuesday and Thursday if you want to look for a GER class that would fit. Um, the GERs you'll have to add, you'll also have to try to fit a SAGES class in there, and again, the physical education class if you choose to take that. What I will do, I'm going to be sending you an email early in the week and I will send a copy of this template for you so that you can use it as a guide when you go to choose your classes. Okay, so our prepare to care or orientation, it is on August 21st, 22nd, and 23rd. And just so you know, it is mandatory. You do have to attend all three sessions. Um, during that time, we're gonna complete for, uh, CPR and first aid. Um, we're also going to do your background checks. You're going to have your fingerprinting done. You're going to need to sign to have your um, background check, but it's very imperative to bring a picture ID. They will not do that unless you bring a picture ID. We will also have time. Um, if you need to exchange your uniforms, we will have a representative from the uniform company there. Um, you can um, ask them any questions, exchange uniforms. Um, you'll be able to print the completion of your immunizations. And we're also going to have a representative from the health um, center as well to answer your questions about the immunizations. I will be present. I can answer any of the questions that you have for registration. And I'm looking forward to meeting all of you. Lastly, um, we're going to have um, Undergraduate Student Nurses Association, and they're going to bring items that you can purchase if you like, items such as pen lights, um, t-shirts, things like that. And then they're now preparing, and they want to welcome you to our school, and they're planning a picnic. So we're, we will soon have information and send that available to you, um, information about the picnic soon. Okay, so now I'm going to turn it over to my colleague, Carlier, and she's going to tell you a little bit about our Student Services Department. And good evening. Again, my name's Carlier Myers, and I am the Registrar for the School of Nursing. I wanted to take an opportunity to have you meet the Office of Student Services on campus. This office is solely dedicated to help students acclimate students to the nursing school, as well as provide assistance in any area that we can help with. We consider our office to be a home base for all students. We have an open door policy, so if you ever have a question, you can just walk into our office and come in and ask, and we will be there to help you. Our office is located on the ground floor of the nursing school, so we're always there with an open door waiting uh, to assist you. Our office is pretty unique in the sense that we have a lot of other representatives that help service the school as well as the student body, the faculty and staff. Um, in addition to myself being the registrar, we also have a director of financial aid uh, for the nursing school. Her name is Dedra Adams and she's there and available to help answer any questions that you have. We also have three recruitment specialists and they typically recruit for the graduate programs. However, if you have an interest in learning more about the graduate programs, they're definitely available to take the time to answer your questions. We also have our Director of Diversity and Inclusion, the Director of Student Services, who is Ms. Tiona Griggs, and she is also there to help and assist you. And if you have any questions about where to go, whom to talk to, we are there to help you, so feel free to stop by at any time. 
We do also help you with lockers. So once you arrive to the School of Nursing, there are lockers available for your use during the day, during the week, during the school year. You stop by our office and our office manager, Daki, will provide you with a locker and you are responsible for making sure that you have the lock and you typically have to share the locker with someone else. So as you're going to prepare to care, meeting all of your wonderful friends from across the country and the world, it'd be nice to find someone that you can share a locker with and come into our office and say, I wanna share this locker and we will provide you with that. Make sure you have a lock and you can have a locker for your use for the academic year, fall and spring. And we want you to visit our office. We want you to come in and see us. Uh, we do have um, a gift for you, a surprise gift for you. So feel free to stop by um, during Prepare to Care, during your first week of classes or at any time, and we will be able to give you a gift to welcome you into the FPB family. Again, we are located on the ground floor of the School of Nursing, uh, so feel free to stop by. Again, my name is Carlier and I am the registrar, so I can help assist you as far as uh, questions regarding classes. Um, of course, I will defer to Kim Edwards as far as particular changes, but we can definitely assist you in making sure that you're registered for um, the correct courses or make any adjustments to your schedule as needed. And now I will defer uh, to my colleague, Gail Petty, who will tell you more about, um, give you, provide you with more information and wrap up and provide you a summary. Welcome, I am Gail Petty, Dr. Gail Petty. I am the Assistant Director of the BSN program, a program that we are all very proud of. Um, I just wanna summarize and reinforce the point as far as the timeliness, how important that is of you getting your immunizations to us. Um, our clinicals start during the first two weeks of the semester and as a um, protection for patients for the agencies that we use, we have to follow the same guidelines that the agencies have for their nursing staff that are currently employed there. Um, so we do encourage you to make sure that you get your immunizations taken care of and get those records sent to us. We have to make sure that we're in compliance with all of the agencies that we use. And um, that takes us some time to do that. And particularly if students are um, not making our deadlines, then the, po the possibility does exist that students will not, that individual student will not be able to start clinicals with their peers. So again, we encourage you to make sure that you get your immunizations taken care of and the documentation of those in, um, immunizations are sent to us. Order your uniforms. The uniforms, we like to make sure that you have your uniforms and they fit you properly. So uh, again, order your uniforms to make sure that you have them and are ready to go when the semester starts. We do have the provision um, that you can, if for some reason that the uniform that you've ordered, you thought that it was too small, um, Robert's uniforms will be with us on during uh, our prepare to care sessions and they will do their best to exchange the uniform for you and um, get another one prepared. The tendency is on the uniforms is you probably want to order them a little bit bigger as opposed to a little bit smaller. We do like students to make sure that they are fitting properly and that they have room in their uniforms to be bending and helping assist patients. So that's just kind of a word to the wisdom. And so if you do happen to have a uniform that does not fit you properly and comfortably and with some extra room for you to be uh, helping with patients, then again, uh, we can help you get that exchange by having Robert's uniforms here with us. The fingerprint waiver, again, all students are required to have their fingerprints done the first week during our prepare to care. Um, we use the method uh, on our university because the turnaround of getting our fingerprints for, for students are very timely. Um, but students that are not 18 years old at the time that their fingerprints are um, to be done, we do need to have a waiver form signed by parents and they will not be able to do fingerprinting unless that waiver is signed 
um, by parents or guardians for students that are not 18 at the time of the fingerprinting. Um, and I, don't, I also want to remind you to make sure that you bring some type of photo ID to that session. During the CPR that we have are required by our agencies again to use the American Heart Association CPR, um, the first ba uh, basic um, light healthcare life support. Um, we use that particular t um, CPR certification it is the American Heart Association, and again, we do that because our agencies require their employees to have that particular type of orientation, certification, I should say, and so we provide that, of, of, we make it available for students to make sure that they have that. Uh, again, we welcome you to stop by and meet anyone in student services. My office is on the first floor, along with Dr. Lynn Lotus, who's not with us tonight, but is the, our program director, and Dr. P or, excuse me, and Patricia Flynn, who is our assistant. We are all available and happy to answer any questions that you might have. That, I think, is all the information that we wanted to formally present to you, and we will be happy to answer any questions, and um, they will be sharing your questions with us, and then we will answer them for you. Okay, well, thank you very much, uh, Kimberly, Gail, and Carlier, for the uh, opening presentation there. Very informative, and uh, it seems to have generated some questions, so we'll just jump right into it. Uh, first question is uh, from a student who wants to know what is SIS, um, and maybe it would help just to, to kind of describe um, what students do with it as well as just in general how it kind of works. Okay. Um, so SIS is um, the system, it's called Student Information System, and it's the computer system that the university uses for all students to manage um, your ability to register for classes, you can see your personal information on there, um, and it's the main system that the university uses uh, through the main registrar's office. So that's something you'll become very familiar with. You can also view your financial aid information uh, in there as well. So once you are provided with, and you've probably already been provided with your case network ID, um, and set up a password, that's what will allow you to access SIS or the student information system. So that's something that you will use throughout your entire time um, at, at FPB and at CASE. All right, thank you very much. Okay, so uh, Laurel writes in, she wants to know how exactly she'll go about submitting her immunization record. On the new student website, you have the form that um, basically tells you what the process is. Your healthcare records are not stored in um, the School of Nursing, but they are confidentially stored in our health services area. So if you go to the student website, you can follow the process on the new student web um, new student checklist and they will give you instructions as far as where to send that information to the health services um, department at the university. Okay, great. And uh, Christina would like to know when exactly students will know which of the clinic lab uh, lecture times for the Nursing 111 course they'll be registered for um, so they could start planning general electives or um, excuse me, general education courses? Um, the students will be able to see that by July 1st. They will see all of their classes. Um, they will be registered by July 1st. Okay, and um, <coughs> Sam Hong writes in and wants to know if it's possible to have a second major and or a minor, and if so, um, how difficult is it as far as workload, classes, time management, et cetera? That is definitely both of those, a major and a minor, are both options. Um, it's up to individual students as far as what their own strengths and weaknesses are to carry that load. We do have students that do that. Probably one of the advantages for students to be able to achieve that is when they have AP credit that they come in with. That frees up their schedules for um, some of the general education requirements, and so they can utilize that 
time that would be normally in a student's schedule to take classes that they might want to major or minor in. Um, nursing and most of the healthcare professions, their schedules have extra time because of the clinical times that is required. So uh, normally a one hour course of a didactic meets one hour a week, but a clinical course is actually a one to four ratio with that. So if they have one uh, credit for clinical time, they're in the hospital for four hours. And so I just like to point that out because we do have quite a bit of clinical time built into our program. And so that is somewhat, that is what the challenge is for students. But it, we do have students that do that and they do very well. Okay, and uh, Sam actually has a couple other questions, which I think are all good, so I'll just go through them um, one at a time. Uh, the next question is, are there any nursing or healthcare organizations on campus? And I think uh, what Sam is probably asking about would be student organizations. We have lots of student organizations on campus, but um, one of the reasons that we have the students from the student nurse organization help on the prepare to care day and those individuals are the ones that are going to be planning the picnic. They did that all on their own. They, they wanted to do something for the new students that are coming in. Um, they can tell you all about that organization um, and it is very active at our school. Um, across the whole entire campus, there are a variety of different types of organizations that students can be involved in, along with a very active Greek life here. Okay, and just uh, continuing along with Sam's questions, are there uh, any healthcare community service organizations? We actually have, as a part of our curriculum, what we call our community service or a community engagement uh, component of our program. And what we do is we partner with um, an organization in the community. We are partnering with the Cleveland City Schools and we actually provide services um, to assist them with some of the challenges that they have as far as promotion of wellness, doing some screening, um, so that you will get exposed to as part of your curriculum. Many times we also get calls from agencies that they would like students to help with uh, Upward Bound or different types of programs. What we do as an administration when we get those calls, we refer them to the student nurse organization. And the student nurse organization then lets other students know what types of opportunities might be available for some volunteer work. And the other thing I think that we have actually had our students do at times when um, we've had um, like a flu epidemic a few years back, our students actually participated in help administering flu vaccines to people in the community. So periodically those type of experiences are um, make themselves available and we utilize students who want to as a volunteer type of experience, they get involved with that. Okay, and uh, another uh, final question from Sam was about uh, research and are there opportunities for first year students to participate in research in nursing? We do, we are a research university. We have many fine senior faculty on our staff that are involved with lots of research projects. Um, I can't really think off the top of my head, specifically a student that's a freshman being involved with a research project. Usually in the first year, the students are getting acclimated to what their uh, load, their workload is going to actually be for them. Uh, we encourage students to actually engage in activities around the university. We view this as your college experience. We like our nursing students to be involved with students that are in engineering, the students in the medical school, we have dental students, we have um, business students, social science students. So we do actually encourage students to balance their workload and their social life. Um, so usually the experiences for students, they're usually upperclassmen that are involved with the research, but by all means, um, most of our senior faculty would be happy to sit down with anybody that was interested in a particular area and familiarize that student with what opportunities might be available. Um, that's probably the best way to answer that. It's, I don't think that anybody would um, 
we don't really have it because the students are so involved with their schedules and the other organizations. But if for some reason somebody wanted to do that and were um, you know, meeting their obligations for their um, classwork, I think that that probably could be arranged. Okay, um, Chloe writes in, she wants to know if the uniforms don't fit, can they exchange them for free or there's a, a, is there additional cost for exchanging uniforms? If you exchange them at the school, it is free. You have to let them know ahead of time um, also, and they could bring uniforms. So if you know ahead of time that your uniform doesn't fit, they will bring the proper size to the school during the prepare to care orientation. Okay, and then uh, we also um, had a, a couple of other questions on the same subject. So, and I think you've already addressed this once before, but just to clarify, uh, students will find out which of the clinical blocks they are in once they get pre-registered, which is by July 1st, correct? Yes. Okay, mm -hmm. great. And then um, Chloe also wanted to know about AP Biology. Um, when she finds out what her AP bio score, if it's a four or five, what do you suggest that she take in place of bio 114? Um, she can add another GER, so a class, that, another class that falls under the social sciences um, or the arts and humanities, or if she's interested in starting a minor, she may want to add one of the classes that would work in that area. The other point is, is that she doesn't really have to take anything as long as she is um, full time. Uh, again, we like to make sure that students balance their college experience and some students like um, to have to fill it with a class, but other students really like to be involved in some of the dance clubs or, or whatever extracurricular activity. So you don't automatically have to um, fill something in that spot, but it's really up to the student. You would still be considered full-time because if you did not take the biology class, you would still be at 14 credits. And as long as you have 12 credits, you are considered full-time. Okay, uh, we've got some questions about the NCLEX. Um, first question, do you offer practice, excuse me, practice exams for the NCLEX? We do. We use Kaplan, um, which is a company that has um, a process that has a variety of exams throughout the program that our faculty, um, just about every course I think now has a Kaplan focused exam um, and tools available to help students with that process. Okay, and there's a, a second question about NCLEX. Would an out-of-state student take NCLEX in Ohio or in their home state? That's a personal, a personal um, preference, I should say. Um, and it depends on where the student is going to be employed many times. Um, and again, many times because you've gone to school in Ohio, uh, students want to just take the NCLEX in Ohio and then because they know that sooner sometimes than they know where they're going to work. The process, though, is if you take the uh, NCLEX in Ohio, you are then able to um, transfer your license, basically, by reciprocity. You can still maintain your Ohio license, but you can actually get a, another license in another state. Each state has their own requirements. So we always like to um, share that with students that Obviously, if they know where they're going to work, that's something to consider to, because they will need a license in the state in which they plan on working. Okay, and it, another question, is it possible for a nursing, or excuse me, a nurse to transfer a license from state to state? The process isn't really transferring a license, but you have to petition to the state in which you are going to work. If I have an Ohio license and I now want to work uh, in New York, I have to go to the New York uh, Board of Nursing website. Every state has a little bit different procedure and follow the guidelines on that website as far as 
how I can apply for a license. And they, there's a fee that's involved. Every state has a little bit of a different time uh, frame as far as to make that happen, but that's the process for doing that. All right, thank you. And uh, a student writes in, wants to know, is there opportunities for nursing students to do study abroad that is focused on nursing? We have a very unique opportunity built into our program, and uh, it is our senior capstone experience. Um, we have students in Hong Kong, we have students in Ireland, we have students um, in Alaska, variety of places, and it is um, a choice of the students. They submit, we can't send everybody sometimes to the same place, but they have the opportunity if they want to do their capstone abroad, there's an application process that they do, they complete. And we do have some students that prefer to stay in the states and to stay locally with their capstone experience, but we do have a variety of sites where students actually do their capstone experience in their senior year abroad. Great, thanks. And uh, a student writes in wants to know, are there things that we should be doing now to prepare for clinicals in the fall? I th <laughs> <laughs> Everything that I said on the list that as far as what we need for you to, to make sure you have in, if you can really focus on getting those immunizations done, go to the new student web, new student checklist. There, um, there are lots of different requirements on that checklist and that is probably the best way that you can help yourself and to help all of us make sure that we get you processed so you can get to your clinical sites those first few weeks of, um, of uh, your college experience. But that is really what we require you to do at this point, nothing else. Okay, another question. Do nursing students typically do internships or other nursing-related work experiences in the summertime between sessions? Yes, they do. After they complete their first um, year of nursing, they have all of the skills that are necessary to work um, in the hospital, and many do. They go home or they stay locally, and they do get jobs over the summer. Okay, and uh, another question. Is it possible for an undergraduate nursing student to specialize? Actually, the undergraduate degree is a generalist degree, and that is the way the profession um, has um, outlined. Um, we do have opportunities in our undergraduate program for students to spend a semester in a pediatric experience, a semester in an obstetric experience. We uh, have something that's relatively new to our program, two years old, the students actually spend a semester in the periop experience. So um, you get to experience those specialized areas in our program, but um, and, and, and it actually helps students. We have a lot of students that are employed in pediatric areas because of the, the pediatric experience, for example, that they get. But it's not, the, the baccalaureate nursing degree is a generalist degree. Okay, a question about advising. Could you tell us how advising works for nursing students? And will I have both a SAGES advisor and a nursing advisor at the same time? Um, yes, you will. During your first year at um, Case Western, you will have your SAGES advisor, and then I will be your advisor for the first entire year. Um, I am available to meet with you uh, by appointment. Also, I do meet with the students as a group um, each month. We um, talk about any concerns or issues that the students are having, and then we also try to have um, a little bit of fun. So we'll do things like um, do Zumba class together after we handle the business part of our meeting. So um, I just try to advise, I answer all your questions or concerns you may have. Um, I enjoy getting to know you and helping you with any concerns that you may have. Okay, I have a question about, uh, several questions about clinicals actually. The first one is, how are clinicals graded? Clinicals are basically a pass-fail. Um, 
Each syllabus, each course has a clinical evaluation tool that um, outlines the criteria that we're looking at for students to actually accomplish, but there's not really a letter grade attached to the clinical. Sometimes there is worksheets that are involved with patient care planning, that there's points attached to those, and those are included in your grade. Okay, and the next question about clinicals is, could, could you tell us more about what hospital clinicals take place at? During your freshman year, um, all your clinicals will be at University Hospital. It's very close to our college. It's right directly across the street. Um, very accessible. You don't need a car. Um, very, uh, there are different units that we will have clinicals on. Okay, a, a question from a student. If I did not apply as a nursing major, but I would like to now be a nursing, excuse me, a nursing major, what should I do? Well, what is wonderful about being admitted to Case Western Reserve University is that you're admitted to all of the majors um, at the university. So what you would need to do is um, contact Kimberly Edwards. <laughs> um, but basically, let her know that you're interested in being a nursing major. And as um, Gail Petty and Kim Edwards have mentioned, you, e you need to get started on the checklist, the new student checklist, so that you can meet all of the dates and deadlines. July 1st is right around the corner. Um, so really, it's just acknowledging that you're going to change your major to nursing and get going on the new student checklist. And we welcome you with open arms. OK, if, uh, if I do not take a GER my first semester, will it put me behind in my progress in my nursing degree? It depends on how much AP credit that you have. Um, and, um, and that varies by each student. Sometimes students actually um, have taken a course in the summer that they've used for a, a general education requirement. So they've done different, um, they've scheduled their classes in different ways. But, um, but it's, it's generally not really an issue with your general education uh, classes. You do need to not wait until your junior and senior year, though, because exponentially your clinical time increases, and it gets more and more difficult for you to actually try and schedule those courses in with your nursing courses. So that's what the challenge becomes. OK, uh, a question about physical education. Uh, so there is a credit for Nursing 277 for physical education. Do I need to register for any other physical education courses, or are there other nursing courses that will count towards physical education as well? Um, CPR is only good um, for two years, so you, we will register you for Nursing 277 now. And then before your junior year, you will be registered for CPR Nursing 277 again. Um, by doing that, you will have one full semester of uh, physical education. Somewhere in the program, in the rest of the three years that you're here, you will have to take one full semester of physical education, and then that will complete your requirements for physical education. Those courses for phys ed are um, half a semester or whole semester long. So again, we would say that look at the class schedule, and you can see the variety of um, courses that are actually available to be counted as phys ed credit. And also, if you do participate in a varsity sport, right. uh, that also counts for the phys physical education requirement. So, or, or the orchestra. Or the orchestra, right. correct. Interesting that you mentioned varsity athletics, because we have a question about that as well. <laughs> um, do clinicals and varsity athletics ever interfere? And do nursing students who are varsity athletes find it difficult to do both? Actually, we encourage our students to participate in um, our varsity sports and our orchestra um, dance also that is of a varsity level. Um, there are challenges, but we make it a point to allow students to participate. Um, Dr. Edwards has um, 
informed, um, made available that she will schedule students for an earlier class um, so that they can make them, students can attend their practices. We've had times when students have, have been in tournaments that we, um, the students are, have to bring us documentation from their coaches that yes, they indeed are going to a tournament game and if it conflicts with um, a nursing clinical or a class involved with nursing, we excuse the students, but students are, uh, need to make up, it's their responsibility to make sure that they make up what it is that they might be missing. But um, we encourage our students to participate and, um, and um, we have volleyball players, basketball players, um, football so players, so we have lots of people that participate. We're, we're very proud of our students for doing that. Great, thank you. And uh, another question, is it possible to, or excuse me, possible for a nursing major to be also per, um, completing pre-health requirements? And also, and if so, how would this be scheduled? Pre-health, do you mean pre-med? Yeah, I think I that's mean, what the student means, pre-med. Pre mm -hmm. We find that it really um, takes students down two different tracks. Um, some of the biology courses that students are required for pre-meds are different than what ours are. And the challenge is, is during the freshman year, your credits, you have a high percentage of credits that are involved with nursing courses. So it's, um, we, it can be done, but it really ends up being down two different career paths. And um, we have some, probably more students that might be a pre-med major end up tra tra um, transferring into nursing, which then um, how that, if it happens in the first year, many times in the summer between the freshman and the sophomore year, we actually offer those first two nursing courses, 111 and um, 122. Um, and so students can, that may be transferring from a pre-med major or any other major, um, can take those courses in the summer and then they can be with their class. Um, so that's what our experience has been regarding those issues. Okay, another question. Where is the nursing school and will all my classes be there? Um, well, the nursing school is part of the health science complex. So we have the School of Nursing, we have the School of Medicine, and the School of Dentistry that are all close together. So you will have um, a lot of your nursing classes in the nursing school. However, because you will um, be taking SAGES classes, because you have other general education requirement courses and other courses that may interest you, those can be um, scattered across the campus so you would have an opportunity to have classes in different buildings that you may not normally uh, venture into on, a, on an everyday uh, that you would be coming to the School of Nursing so you will be across campus it just depends on the class um, but you will have um, a high percentage of your time uh, will be spent in the School of Nursing for class. And the School of Nursing is the Francis Payne Bolton School of Nursing yes. so that's how it's going to be labeled. Okay, um, what are your thoughts on trying to maintain a part-time job and be a full-time nursing student? It's really <laughs> challenging, but students do it. Um, it's, it's probably best if you wanna work to focus on doing that in the summers. Um, it's, it's something, you're, you only have so many hours in a day, and we like students to be prepared for their clinicals, um, f refreshed and ready to go, and even in their classrooms, we uh, like students to not be overworking um, by cramming too many activities in their schedules. But our students do work, and um, that is really a student's option to do that. And again, um, it depends on how much AP credit you come in with, it depends on what your normal energy level is and, and how much study time it requires you to uh, actually um, meet the, cl the class objectives and maintain a C or above, or above grade point average. One of the things that Dr. Lotus, who's the director of our program, always says is that many times the students that are attracted to our program have are very bright, uh, and have not had to study in some of their experience in education prior to coming to nursing school. 
um, you will have to make sure that you allow uh, time to study because it is a challenge for everyone when they are entering a healthcare profession uh, curriculum. Okay, we have about five minutes left, so we'll have time just for just a few more questions. Uh, one of the questions that just came in, if I just want to major in nursing, do I need to take summer classes after the first year? No, our curriculum is Monday through Friday. Um, although in our senior year, the students, when they're in their clinical practicum, they actually work with the nurse and they follow her schedule. So at that time, um, they may be working night shift or the weekends, whatever that staff nurse is actually working. But um, you do not have to routinely schedule summer classes or weekend classes to meet the requirements of our, of our curriculum. Our program is designed so that you can graduate um, in four years with your Bachelor of Science in Nursing. And uh, the last question, for the Office of Student Services, when I go to uh, get my gift in the first week, <laughs> is there someone in particular that I should talk to? No, you can just come and stop in and you can say, hi, I'm from, you know, New Haven, Connecticut. I'm starting my first year here um, at FPB and I would like to get my free gift. That's all you have to do. <laughs> just come and say hello. That's really what we want you to do. Okay, well, uh, we're out of time for this evening's session, um, but we'd like to thank all of our presenters, uh, Kimberly Edwards, Gail Petty, Carly or Myers. Thank you very much for all your input and for answering all of our questions. Um, we do want to uh, note to all the viewers tonight that our uh, webinar series will continue throughout the rest of this week, uh, with tomorrow and Friday being webinars from the K School of Engineering, and then the following week from the College of Arts and Sciences. So thank you all for tuning in this evening, and have a great night. <laughs>